So let's start breaking the sole of down. I could snap with my mouse to close to where that marker is, but with using my key command um, that you would get if you take lessons with me, it's much more useful to use your key commands to cycle through the markers to have your snap right on the beat. And then there's no guesswork that you might be slightly off using your mouse. So here's the beginning of the solo. There's that hole number three bend again. Back to hole number two. So, a great little micro exercise to work that kind of stuff and to get your articulation. You watch my video on the ta ta and dynamics about articulating a note, articulating a note, and making sure you nail it on pitch on my website. Um, uh, a leapfrog exercise is really useful to help with this stuff. I mean, you could practice two draw to three draw. I'm just going from two draw to every note on the th whole three bend. And so, because essentially that's what this lick is based on, that kind of practicing pattern. <laughs> so much attitude. I just love it. Don't be down. And so listening, where is that? So find the first note. There it is, two blow. And he goes up. What do you think? It's an octave. You can use a tongue slap in there. Bergen is primarily a pucker player, but he might have even used a tongue slap there to give it more. And then the next part. Again, that whole three. So taking the time to practice your whole three bends really helps with the nuance of really controlling and shaping this bend. Starting a middle band. Middle band, uh, first band number three to middle band number three. And also really listen and pay attention to the dynamics of how he leans in and out of a note. Because this will really inform your playing. And again, I want to emphasize the idea of working, when you're working on transcribing anything, and the whole purpose and, and why I love transcribing players that I really like, whether it's a piano player, a saxophone player, a harmonica player, is you really, you're really trying to absorb the way they think, the, the emotion that's being coming out, the attitude and the playing. And by really taking the time to really, not just sort of play the solo, but really learn the solo, is really the only way you're going to learn this stuff. And then you learn some scales and stuff and, and patterns, and then you start improvising. But this kind of building your vocabulary by really studying these pieces will inform your playing hugely. So, again, uh, all the great jazz and blues players did tons of this kind of stuff. And here with Transcribe, it's way easier, way faster. <laughs> you can hear how each sort of number, the two draw is a little bit, you know, more than three draw. So it's, it's just... Kind of thing. And then next bar, this is where it gets a little bit wonky here. And this is what I love about Bergen. Um, here he's, there's a little pause and he's kind of playing on the upbeat on this first note. Now the thing about this beat, well, let's just listen to for a second to the groove of this thing, is that the only it is a four beats to the bar if i count one two three four one two three four one but you you only really hear 
the bass and the drum hitting beat one and three. And that's kind of the anchor. Um, for instance, later on in this solo, you really hear him articulating beat one and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Just about every part of that last four bars of that solo, you really hear him how he's anchored on beat one and three. It just helps to think about breaking the rhythm down. Uh, back to that riff here. So sometimes if you've got a tricky riff that's got some interesting, you know, an interesting choice of notes and rhythm, it's easier just to break down the rhythm first. Um, again, this is sort of micromanaging and helping you break the stuff down quickly and easily. So just start with that. That's what it is. Bop. So it's downbeat. Bop. It's a really great thing to try to do that. Clap your hands and articulate the beat. And then he gets into this triplet thing. And so here we get. Let's. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so and then you try to add the melody to it. So, up, let's just work in this first part. Or sing it an octave lower if you can't sing that high. Always try to sing. The golden rule about transcribing, again, um, when you're learning this stuff, the tendency for beginner transcribers is to rush through this and you want to get it on the harp. Uh, play it once. Sing it first. Try to play it. I'm going to purposely make a mistake. Oops. As soon as I repeat that on the harmonica twice, I am reinforcing a mistake. So if you're not sure, you immediately, you, you play it once on the harmonica and then you go back and listen to compare. And we sing it. And try to play along with it. Oh, okay, there I got it now. Blow forward of draw middle middle bend first bend number three and then he gets into this triplet thing. So again the count two three four one. So on beat four here he starts on a triplet one two three one two three one da, da. and then he switches ba ba da ba and he's out of the triplet. So one two three da da. Da, 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 da. And this stuff is, feels, you know, to just try to count one, da, 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 wa, da, 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 you know, just, I'm just making something up, doing a, an eighth note. This is the chord note beat. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and wa, da, da, one, two, three, one. It's a great thing to try to do that kind of stuff, to internalize this stuff with a count and vocalize it. Because as soon as you can vocalize it, and think about your tapping your foot or clapping, it makes this stuff much easier. So, listening. Just work on that part. And then, yep, got that. So, so you notice how I'm playing and stopping before I'm watching the cursor move to the, uh, to the next marker, and I stop it just before it gets to that marker. Da, ba, ba. So there's the triplet. Just, uh, da, da, da. Then that first bend number three to two draw to full bend number two. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. That's easy. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just figure it out for yourselves. 
Easy. And then he does a little chromatic walk down to the the new chord, which is that seven chord or the key of F on a C harmonica. Again, you know, give us some nice giving a little ta articulation to the note. Da, ti, da. Watch my video on uh, ta ta notes, playing ta ta notes in uh, dynamics to to get a bit more of a handle on that aspect of things. So one, two, three, four. So you can, he, you know, even though the, the the drummer and the bass player don't articulate beat two and four, here he is coming on a beat three. Sort of it helps you to anchor and think about the counting. One, Two, three. So are you coming in there? Boom, ba, ba, ba. Boom, ba, boom, ba, da. Again, only you can press play and stop as much as you need to just to hear one or two notes. There's the first note. Da. Oh, that's it. Okay. Ba, da, ba, da. There it is. Oh, there it is. A lot of repetition on just those notes. And then he gets into... Love that. Um, so... Okay, that's easy. And then back into a triplet. Um, and down, so listening to the rhythm again, one, two, three, four. So you can hear he comes in with a triplet on beat three and four. Three, four, one, two. So ba 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 ba. And so ba, listening. Ba da 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 da. Uh, it's not easy to sing because there's a lot of there's a little chromaticism there from blow four to first bend number four. Uh, first bend number three to blow four to first bend four. Da, 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 da. That's easy. And then... <laughs> love the, 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 the Bergen vibrato. Uh, classic, uh, like Paul Butterfield, but um, Bergen, I think, had more subtlety in, in sort of employing different types of vibrato and using it when it was necessary. Paul Butterfield, I always, fantastic player that he was, bless his heart, um, I always found that he constantly used this very thick choke vibrato, which just didn't always suit everything that he was playing. And you really heard the clicking of his throat in there. Bergen here is, you know, to practice this stuff and get mastery over your choke vibrato, I have videos about this. You can watch them on my website. And again, practicing at different speeds to, to really emulate the speed of the vibrato at these different tempos, as you can slow it up and speed it down and transcribe is a great thing. slowing it down listening so that's a a little bend done on bend four bending it up quickly and then a little glissando back to hold two draw moving on speeding it back up that's easy Move into this next part. You know, that little again, 
Don't miss those little articulations of the way he inflects a note. That sounds good to me. And then... Okay, I got that. And, and, you know, the thing about Bergen is that I think so he often throws these triplets in on beat, you know, around beat, beat three or four, which kind of take you by surprise again. And, and they sound just so good when you mix up the time and makes your ear sort of go, oh, and, and uh, gives it that attitude, which I love so much in this piece. Ba -ba -ya -ba. Again, stopping the cursor before it gets to the next uh, um, marker. Another way to do that is I have my key commands with uh, uh, H, J, K, and L. L always expands the view to the right. K, which is next to the L on the other side, deselects it from the right. And then H selects things towards the left. And J, which is just to the right of H, deselects from it's sometimes it's a great way to just if you know if you're too lazy to stop it uh, uh, you turn the loop function off I mean here it's on I just find that annoying because uh, you might want to just listen to it once and then see if you can play it oops and so that's one way to use that stuff when you get my key commands when you take a lesson with me. Um, and I'll send my personalized key commands to you, and they're super handy. The thing about working with a program like this, it's really a pretty simple program. Um, you know, the way, the fact that you can see the timeline here and the sort of mauve colored thing above and below. Again, this blue bar here moves the spectrum around to different parts of the song. These blue markers in this expanded timeline view um, show you uh, the whole song, whereas this timeline on the top shows you the zoomed in view. In other words, this blue bar here represents this whole view of this song here, which is about half of the whole audio file. Uh, and that comes in super handy when you're, when you're talking about timelines. And Anyway, back to where we were, got that riff. <laughs> Bop, 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 bop. So listening. Just figure this one riff. And the next one. Oops. So, you know, we're just chunking, chunking things down. Again, when you can get into this idea of thinking in micro chunks and just absorbing little chunks by themselves, it really helps you to think about, first of all, about thinking about time. And, and it tunes your ear. It's like, well, I don't know how to come in just in that one part. If you work this way, it really helps thinking this way so that you can suddenly just pull any part of the solo out and play it. Um, and it's, it's a super handy thing to be able to do. Listening. And da, da, da. The classic bend three onto... Mm -hmm. First bend, number three. Da, da. Da, da, da. And again, the tongue articulation. Got it. Slowing it down, listening. You can hear full bend, number two, with a bit of a glissando down to... Two and one, and then back up to eighty percent. Do you tell? Do you tell? Do you tell? Easy. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. Figure it out for yourselves. But with, oh, no, I will share. It, it, he's playing there a double stop. Uh, I'm told three and four draw with a bend. So it's essentially 
you could think of it as ghosting hole four, but it's a pretty clear double stop with a bend on hole three. I'm listening. I'll pick up to that note. Again, the great thing about transcribe is you can really articulate every little note. And again, if, if you know, if here I have an expanded view of the whole verse, but if I wanted to, I could come right in and zoom in on just that one part. Sometimes it makes it easier to work that way. So we snap to the marker. I got it. And then glissando down. I can make my notes here. Make it easy. He's he's just playing two draw. Get the vibrato. Don't forget the vibrato. And then uh, a little breath before the the lick, and then the ooh, and then a tricky lick. We can slow that down to fifty percent. Let's just get the first two notes. And four blow to two draw, but the the way he, I'm sure he's playing this because it makes articulating the lick much easier is he's playing blow four to blow three, because of course blow three is the same as hold two draw. So at full speed, I said, how the heck are you gonna play that? And this is the way to make it easy. And then back to 50%. So he's, it's a sort of the leapfrog or the, or the pedal point, if you wanna call it, from two draw to, and then three draw. And then you can play two draw after three draw. So blow four, blow three, three draw, two draw. And then, and then right on the. Back up to 80%. Oops. And then just a big vibrato on the end. And it kind of fades it out. You know, like practicing your dynamics on a note. Um, and now let's glue it together. 